there are numerous variations of sailing boats. Depending on the number of masts on a ship and the number and shape of the sails, there are different types of rigging. The rigging describes the structure of the rigging or rig. Here, for example, we see a sloop, which is a most popular type in recreational sailing. Here are the common types of sail yachts. A catboat, sloop, cutter, catch, yawl, and schooner. Let's go through these types in more detail. We start with simplified rigging, the cat rigging. Here we see a laser with a cat rig. Cat rig, or cat rigging, refers to a type with no headsails. There is only one sail on one or more masts. The mast is unstayed, that is not held in place by additional metal cables such as the forestay, backstay, or lateral shrouds. Such boats are very easy to operate, and almost all one-person dinghies are catboats. However, the lack of a headsail results in limited performance to windward. Cat is not to be confused with cat, a catamaran. A sailing dinghy is a catboat that used to be a small, round-hulled boat without a fixed keel. Until the 19th century, sailing dinghies were built as sharp stern boats, later with the typical transom. A dinghy class designates dinghies with a uniform construction specification. It usually refers to hull shape, length, width, weight, and sail area. Dinghy sailing is a popular sport. On almost every body of water of sufficient size, there are sailing clubs that practice dinghy sailing. Sloop. Modern sailing yachts are sloop-rigged. A sloop has a mast, a mainsail, and a headsail. A sloop has a so-called 7 eighths rig. The forestay, to which the headsail is attached, is at 7 eighths of the total height of the mast. The ratio can also be 6 eighths or 9 tenths on modern yachts, but the term 7 eighths has prevailed so far. A sloop rig rends to provide better performance to windward than rigs of similar size with three sails. Using furling and reefing systems, the sails on sloops can be adjusted to accommodate winds from a gentle breeze to a gale. The sloop is considered the most efficient form of rigging and is the most widely used. Cutter. A cutter rig means two headsails and one mainsail. The larger headsail is called the headsail, and the smaller the staysail. The sail area is divided equally between the mainsail and the headsail. The advantage of two smaller headsails is that they are easier to handle and can be stowed faster or the sail area reduced when the wind increases. In the past, the headsail was often attached to the jib boom, but modern rig designs dispense with the jib boom and instead have a bowsprit to which the jib is tensioned. The bowsprit is a strong spar firmly attached to a ship's hull and protrudes over the bow, like you see on this classic sail yacht. When the wind increases, the staysail can be lowered to reduce sail area, and the ship will still have a good balance. The cutter's disadvantages include reduced windward performance in light winds and difficulty bringing the headsail around in front of the inner sail when tacking. Catch. By adding a smaller mizzen mast aft, the boat becomes a catch. Both masts are within the design waterline, which is essential for distinguishing them from the yawl. The sail on the mizzen mast is called the mizzen sail, and the sails on the main mast are called the mainsail and jib or headsail. A catch can have several headsails, as we see on this catch. The catch was developed for fishing and coastal shipping in England in the mid 17th century and is now a popular long distance sail yacht. A catch can also carry two smaller sails instead of a mainsail, such as this catch, called eight wall moline. With two masts, a catch is more complex to handle because you have to operate more sheets. A catch does not sail as well to windward as a sloop, and the mizzenmast is in the middle of the cockpit on an aft cockpit boat. Otherwise, the two masts bring more weight and cost more. When the wind is blowing from behind, the mizzen covers the mainsail, and when the wind is upwind, the mainsail can disturb the airflow of the mizzenmast. But the modern catch rigged yachts have partially remedied these disadvantages. The two masts are almost the same size and are further apart than on older designs, so the sails affect each other little. By dividing a large headsail into two smaller headsails, the forces are distributed, and the handling of the sheets is made easier, that is often the argument of owners who buy a catch.
Yawl. The yawl is rarely seen anymore. It was originally developed for fishing boats. The yawl is similar to the catch, except that the mizzen mast stands outside the design waterline and is usually significantly shorter than the catch. If you mentally extended the mizzen mast downwards, it would protrude from the hull above the water's surface. Yawls tend to have more elegant lines and rigging than catches because the mainmast can be further aft and there is more room for headsails. The mizzen on a yawl is mainly used to balance the center of gravity of the sail and can therefore be significantly smaller than on a catch. The yawl is rarely encountered today because, among other things, the modern transom stern cannot be constructed since the mizzen mast and its controls take place at the back. But a transom allows higher hull speeds and makes it easier to get in and out of the boat and pick up floating people or fallen overboard. Schooner A schooner is a sailing ship that has two or more masts. Unlike a yawl, the two-masted schooner has a taller aft mainmast and a smaller foremast. The rear mast is the main mast and carries the mainsail. The foremast has a schooner sail and can carry several headsails. A schooner carries so-called fore and aft sail as the main sail on all masts, which means, sails aligned in the longitudinal direction of the ship, like all modern yachts. The counterpart to this is square sails, which are transverse to the ship, like on the old pirate ships you may know from the movies. Originally, schooners had only two masts, later schooners with three and more masts were built. Especially in the United States in the late 19th and early 20th century schooners with five and more masts were built. Here we see a French schooner with topsail schooner rigging. This rigging allows the ships to sail very close to the wind. Schooners are very beautiful. Many traditional ships are schooners. Regarding sailing performance, schooners are the least effective on all downwind courses. The operation of the numerous sails is very power and labor intensive and is now realized by hydraulic and electric winches. Conclusion The types of rigging discussed are shown here. Based on wind tunnel test results for different rigging, we can conclude that more masts and more sails on a hull length of 15 meters are disadvantageous. They increase the weight and do not provide any additional propulsion. Dividing the Genoa into several smaller headsails reduces the wind load on each sail, thus extending the life of the sails. This means that the masts can be made smaller. If there are several masts, the sails must also be further apart, overlapping as little as possible. This should be considered from a ship length of at least 16 meters or better from a hull length of 20 meters. Multiple masts also mean reduced stress on the rigging and the masts themselves making the catch rig safer and more durable. It also doesn't capsize that quickly. So, there are also some advantages of a catch rig over a sloop rig. However, the most efficient rigging is sloop rigging. When it comes to sailing characteristics, the correct profile of the sail, its cut, and the materials that influence the flow conditions on the sail, are much more important than the number of masts and sails.